So what is it that separates a good drywaller from a really great drywaller? So I was in the middle of editing a way too long video and I figured this part of the video could stand alone. So we are going to jump straight to that and then maybe I'll talk about this other video later. Okay, but now we are about to get into the nitty gritty of hanging drywall. So this is one of the things that separates even the pros from like the really good pros. So that is picking which stud or joist to land your butt joints onto. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking, why do you have a factory edge going up to a butt joint? We'll get into that. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. But picking which joist or stud to place your butt joint onto. So this is so important because what you have to imagine is that every time you make a butt joint, you're gonna be bringing up the surface of the wall or ceiling by at least an eighth of an inch. So a lot of the time, if you take a straight edge and you go across a ceiling, what you will notice is that sometimes you get a joist or a truss that sticks down more. And so that's gonna make it rock on there. And if you put the butt joint on the one that's hanging down lower, so they can sometimes be hanging down lower up to as much as a half an inch. It's crazy the variation that you'll see from a truss factory or a bowed stud in the wall. So if you go and put it on there, you take it from being a quarter inch to a half inch to sometimes as bad as like three quarters of an inch. So it's really important that you check the framing and instead of just willy nilly hanging the whole ceiling or the wall, you actually check, okay, I got a 12 foot board. Now I need to see where does that land? Oh, this one sticks down a ton. I better cut it back one joist because that's another thing. What happens when you go one over from the down joist and you put a joint there, if you have a good finisher and they actually build that out, that gives them a natural opportunity to float out that inconsistency. But general practice is to try and go a little bit even further away, like maybe two away from it. But sometimes you run the risk of it starting to go like that. Okay, so I had to explain that to now explain why I chose to do what I've done with this wall and why we have a joint right here. So you see that this is a corner bead. Well, for whatever reason, whoever installed this corner bead in the last reno had it sticking out like three eighths of an inch. Like this wall hooks. So I'm gonna bring you guys up closer and show you what I mean. Okay, we are tight to the stud, tight to the stud, tight to the stud, tight, tight to the corner. And then look at this, check that out like that sticks out so much so as you guys can see that's sticking out I, I mean it's at least a half an inch if not more so we're gonna do something about that so my original thought process with this you know i saw this and i thought whoa that's pretty bad i didn't realize that it's actually guys that's almost three quarters of an inch that is insane so this this is sticking out like three quarters of an inch more than this part of the wall so my original thought was, well, that's a perfect place to put a joint because you know, I'll screw this tight and then all of a sudden we got to build this out. But I mean, even like, even if we screw that tight, we are now going to be looking at half an inch. So I would have to build this whole section out half an inch. So while at first it seemed like a good place to put a joint and it would be if it was only a quarter inch. In fact, that would really help straighten out this wall to have the joint be right here but it's still not enough. So that brings me to another mistake that people make all the time, and that is not shimming out the studs when it would make a big difference to do that before they hang the board. So as you can see, I have this board hung right here. We're halfway there, but it's not too late for me to pull these screws and add a shim. I'm gonna cut a quarter inch shim, and we're gonna put that in there, and that's gonna majorly help take the hump out of the wall. It'll be a long rolling undulation, but it's not gonna be a huge hump and then dip. Okay, let's be clear here though. If you're a drywaller, um, you're kind of off the hook. So you should have looked for the down joist or the out stud and not put the joint there. That's what a really good drywaller should do, but it's not on the drywaller to be adding shims to the framing. So where that lies, that responsibility lies to the homeowner and the general contractors, the carpenters. If you guys haven't looked for that stuff and made your framing right or done it while they're there, then it's on you. Because most drywallers do not show up to the site 
with a package full of shims or a table saw to make it right. Like again, it's on the homeowner or the GC. This is going to be a bit of a pain, I think, but it's going to be a lot better than floating that out or messing around with cabinets that are trying to hang cabinets on a wall with a bow like that in it. So hopefully we can get this in here just right. Oh. <laughs> I don't want this to go behind here. Yeah. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of the cure. That screw should help me be able to pull that out. There we go, good. Yes, the glazier's bar wins again. Or beekeeper's tool. Okay, I need to do a really quick little intermission here, you guys, because I actually made a mistake here. So if I wanted to make this better, what I should have done is actually pull that whole board off and shimmed every single stud. And that would have actually straightened the wall out properly. But sometimes when you're in the middle of a task and you're, you know, just trying to get through it, that answer doesn't always come to you. It actually came to me a couple days later. So we all make mistakes. And um, yeah, that wall is like boarded and taped and first coated. So yeah, it's not getting it. However, the good news is that there is going to be a stove right there breaking up where most of that hump is. So you're going to have some lower cabinets, stove right where the hump is, and then more lower cabinets. So it shouldn't be a problem. It'll be interesting to see how I handle that in some of the future Lope videos. But anyways, let's get back to it. Okay, you guys. So this brings me to some more common mistakes. All right. You can use the same screws. That's no problem. But don't put them back in the same holes. Um, it's already blown out and torn. You're gonna have to put them back in different holes. Oh, that one hurt. Ah. Show you guys that in a second. That's gonna need a band-aid. So maybe that can be another mistake, pushing on the drill <laughs> while your thumb's still in the way. Ow! There it is. Less than pleasant, but not too bad. Now let's take a look at this. As we can see, it's tight there. And then we got that looking fantastic. All right, now let's take a look. So as we can see, you know, it's still, like if we split the difference, we got a quarter inch there, and we got about a quarter inch there. But when we push it tight on this side, we can see there's about an eighth of an inch. So once we tape that and float it out, it's gonna be even flatter than it was. So that's looking pretty good. So with a little careful planning, you can actually make stuff work out better. So again, we put the joint here because it'll help build it out even more. Because if I put the joint over there or over here, it would just make the wall wavy, wavier. So now we just have one big long wave instead of multiple waves or a massive wave that's gonna require an inch of mud. Well, there you have it, you guys. That, in my opinion, is what separates the good drywallers from the really good ones. And I actually used to have some hangers back when I was doing only taping. And I had a couple hangers, so a couple of older French-Canadian guys. One of them's name was Christian, and I really wish I could remember what his brother's name is. I think it started with an R. Those guys were awesome. They actually would come on site with a skill saw and shims, and they would solve stuff. Now I tried to make sure there wasn't any of that for them, but sometimes I was just taping other contractors' jobs. So um, those guys would actually totally solve that stuff. Now I wanna be really clear right here that unless you're paying the drywallers to fix that stuff, it's not actually their responsibility. 
So if you're paying a drywaller a piecework rate, that is a square foot rate by the square foot of board, that's how much they get paid, then you cannot expect them to go around fixing the framing. So you either have to pay them extra, or if they're working hourly, then they can spend all the time they need fixing stuff. Provided, of course, that it comes in close enough to what the price you guys talked about was. You know, that it wasn't $5,000 for shimming stuff. <laughs> Anyways, um, like I said, I thought the subject matter in this video was good enough to stand alone. And what this video that I've been working on is, is I accidentally made like an hour and a half at least long video about like every single little mistake that I could think of that you could make while hanging drywall and um, I, I totally I, I just don't know why I did that because it might be really boring it's taking a ton of time to work on um, you know if you guys want to see it let me know I know there's gonna be a couple keeners that want to see it but <laughs> I watch YouTube sometimes too and I don't usually have an hour and a half so when I accidentally make a video like that, you know, I'm like, man, whoops. <laughs> but anyways, maybe there's some other way that I can think of to, um, you know, try and bring some of the best stuff from that video and summarize it in some sort of way, but who knows. Uh, anyways, that's it. Uh, we're looking really dramatic here with the shadows and the dark shirt and the light and the... Yeah, it's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> But that has nothing to do with the video. I hope you learned something in this video. Let me know in the comments what you think really good drywallers should and shouldn't do. I hope you're doing well. And um, till the next video. Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. And thanks for watching this episode of The Lope. Till the next one. <laughs>